Hello. <laughs> Lately, I have been feeling incredibly stressed, and I have been doing a lot of work and taking on probably more than I should and definitely more than I can handle. And I was thinking about what I wanted to film this week, and I knew I needed to film something like chill and relaxed that would not take me an insane amount of time to film and edit. So of course, I decided to do the most self-indulgent YouTuber video in existence. <laughs> I'm gonna react to your assumptions about me, because this is my channel, so everything is about me. <laughs> In all seriousness though, I did this video like two or three years ago at this point, a really long time ago, and there are clearly like a lot more people here now and a lot of new people who don't know that much about me, and I feel like I get comments and questions every single day where people are like, I had no idea that you liked this, or I had no idea that you did this, or that you were that, or whatever, and I'm like, I feel like I talk about this all the time, like all I do is talk about myself. I feel like at this point everyone should know some of these basic facts about me, but apparently a lot of you don't know because I constantly get DMs and people are like, like, surprised to find out things that I thought everybody knew. But anyway, a while ago I went on Instagram and I asked you all for some assumptions about me and I'm gonna go through some of them and react to some of them. But I'm also gonna do my makeup while I um, answer these or react to these, whatever it's called. Um, I probably shouldn't put this headband on. I literally just washed my hair and it's gonna ruin my curls. But you know what? Actually, you know, this looks awful. So we're not gonna do that. Never mind. <laughs> but I have my mirror right here, so I'm just gonna put on a little bit of makeup. Also, it's been a while since I've done my makeup and um, I kind of just wanna do something relaxing. So that's the only reason I'm doing it. <laughs> but let me find these assumptions. I literally asked for these like a month ago and then I didn't film this video until now. So <laughs> I'm behind on everything, okay? But before we get any further into this video, I do quickly wanna thank today's sponsor, which is none other than the lovely Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes on pretty much any subject you can imagine. So if you're looking to develop a skill or learn something entirely new, Skillshare is the perfect place to help you do that. As many of you know, I love to journal, and one of my favorite things about journaling is hand lettering. And I'm pretty decent at it, but I feel like I could definitely brush up on some of my skills and techniques. So I've been taking this course called Calligraphy Essentials, a 10 day challenge by Bryn Chernoff. And the idea is that you dedicate about 10 minutes every day to just practicing your calligraphy. And it's been really nice and really helpful to get me back into the practice of regularly doing some hand lettering and trying out new and different skills that I'd never tried out before. And I feel like I'm definitely learning a lot of new things. So if you're interested in trying out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. But once again, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And without any further ado, let's get back into the assumptions. I just realized I didn't bring my makeup sponge. So maybe we're just not gonna do any face makeup at all. Or I'll just use a little bit of concealer on my finger. I think that's what I'll do. Okay. Anyway, okay, first off, I'm just gonna start with an assumption that I got multiple times and a question that I get constantly, and I'm just gonna answer it here. And I feel like I've answered this a thousand million times at this point, but we're gonna talk about it again. Everybody asks me, Hannah, are you Persian? You look like you're Persian. Are you Middle Eastern? Are you Arab? Like, I get this question all the time. I don't know how many times I have to tell people, yes, <laughs> I am Persian. <laughs> Do I have to put it in my bio for you all to like know 100%? I'm not gonna do that. My parents are both Persian and I am ethnically Persian. My parents were both born in Iran. I was born in the US. I have never been to Iran. I do speak Farsi. I know there are still like a lot of new people here and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this video in the first place to answer questions that like newer people have and stuff. But like, I feel like this question I've answered so many times that I mean, I guess I will keep answering it until I stop getting it, which I think will probably be never. Mm, you have no patience. That's actually completely untrue. I think I'm actually one of the most patient people that I know. This might be because I live with um, people who are incredibly impatient. So by comparison, I'm actually very patient, but I actually think that I'm a very patient person in general. I mean, even when it comes to like basic things, like I don't mind waiting for things. For example, like waiting in line for something, like I won't get as annoyed as a lot of people tend to get annoyed if they have to wait for a really long time in line or something like that. But even like emotionally, I'm like very, very patient with people people. Like I don't get frustrated or um, upset very easily. The only time I get frustrated and like impatient is when I have to deal with like someone who's just like flat out ridiculous or stupid or just like a bad person. I have no patience for that. I have no patience for someone being a bad person, if that makes sense. I'll snap like immediately. But besides that, I'm a very patient person, honestly. I like this one. You were trying really, really hard. I like to think that I'm trying really, really hard. I feel like I am. I feel like, especially for the past year, I have been trying my absolute best 
best to just do my absolute best and be my absolute best, but also like being patient with myself, going back to the last one. I guess one of the only things I'm not patient with is myself. <laughs> um, I tend to be really patient with other people, but I'm not very patient with me. And I feel like in this past year, I've learned to be a lot more patient with myself. And I think that's really helped me. And it's definitely made it easier for me to like do the things I wanna do, be the person I wanna be and actually try my best. And you know, give myself credit for the things that I do. I definitely think I'm trying really, really hard. Last year was really hard for me as it was for everyone. But apart from like the pandemic itself, stuff in my personal life was very hard. I had to really, really learn to give myself a lot of grace and time to like heal and work through things and forgive myself for a lot, for a lot of stuff that I was at fault for and for a lot of stuff that I thought I should be at fault for, if that makes sense. So yeah, I feel like I, I was trying really hard last year and right now I'm also trying really hard in different ways to just do what I want to do, accomplish the things I want to accomplish, be the person I wanna be. Yeah, thank you for that assumption. I hope it comes across that I'm trying really hard. I don't know how that blush on my nose looks. I don't know if that was a great idea. I am not loving this look. I'm also really not doing anything with it, but that's much better with the powder now. I also like this one. You were the type of person to procrastinate essays, but still get an A. Yes, that's literally the reason I continue to procrastinate because I would turn in papers like 10 seconds before their deadline and I would get 100%. So naturally that reinforced the idea that I can wait until the last minute to do anything. And now I just live my life like that. And honestly, it's really bad. <laughs> that's another thing I'm trying Trying to work on especially is to like not procrastinate so much because like I mentioned at the beginning of this video I have so much work to do right now and like I don't even have the time to procrastinate it like it's too much to procrastinate and it's stuff that I care too much about too to procrastinate if that makes sense like I'm not gonna half-ass any of the stuff that I'm working on so I like have been focusing really hard and trying really hard again going back to the trying really hard thing develop time management skills that like will keep me from procrastinating. I've been getting a lot better about not procrastinating, which is super weird coming from someone who literally procrastinated everything from like the second she entered school. <laughs> oh, I like this. I think you prefer animated things, Disney movies, Avatar The Last Airbender to live action. That's absolutely true. Not Disney movies, actually. I'm really not a big Disney person. Like I grew up watching the Disney movies as a kid and stuff, but I don't really, like I haven't watched any new Disney stuff for years and years. But Avatar, as most of you know, it's like my favorite favorite thing in existence. It's my favorite TV show and my favorite story and oh my god for a second can we just talk about for a second the fact that we are getting more Avatar Universe content. I'm so excited. Anyway that's beside the point. Yes you are correct. This assumption is absolutely correct. I almost at this point exclusively watch animated things except for K-dramas. I watch so many K-dramas. I'm in love with K-dramas. Besides K-dramas, I pretty much literally only watch animated shows. Like I love anime, I love cartoons. Honestly, like I just think it's in so many ways like the superior medium for storytelling. I mean, besides books, obviously. I adore books, but like in terms of like film and like on screen. I just love animated things. I love them so much. And I have said this before in a video, I know, but like people always think that things that are animated are for kids. And first of all, why is it bad if it's for kids? That's what I don't understand. Second of all, why do you assume that it's only for kids? Like, have you watched anime? 90% of those are not for kids. And so many of them are better than like 90% of live action shows I've seen. So like before you disrespect an entire uh, genre of storytelling, of filmmaking. Why don't you try it? Just try it. It is the superior medium and I will stand by this until the day I die. End of story. <laughs> Okay, so I got a lot of variations on the assumption that like I don't want to be on booktube or I'm tired of booktube or I've outgrown booktube or something like that. So let's talk about that for a minute. This assumption is half true and half false. I don't not want to be on booktube. I want to be on booktube. I think I will forever want to be a part of booktube because I don't think I will ever get tired of reading. However, I feel like I have outgrown my content that I make on booktube. Like the content that I have made in the past, like not all of it obviously, but there's just just so much booktube content that I have no desire to make. Like I feel like this was pretty obvious even a few years ago I stopped making things like TBRs. I stopped doing a lot of like the quote-unquote staple booktube videos that I used to do 
because I was getting like tired of the repetitiveness and like the format of it. And once you've been making videos for like a while, like I've been doing this for coming on six years now, you're gonna eventually get tired of it, you know? Like you're gonna want to expand, you're gonna wanna try like new things, different things. And um, I feel like that's just like the point that I got to. It's not because I don't wanna be a part of this community because I love this community. This community is the reason I'm where I'm at now. It's honestly the reason I'm alive in a lot of ways. Like not to be dramatic, but like it is. This place like kept me afloat at a time where I didn't think that I could survive, if that makes sense. And I'm forever grateful to it for that and I don't want to leave. And also I love reading. I feel like a lot of people think because I haven't been reading in the past like year very much that like I just suddenly don't like reading. Like I, I constantly see, especially like on Twitter, people say things like, oh, these booktubers like don't even read. Like they don't read. Like why do they call themselves booktubers? I'm like, have you never been in a reading slump? Are you a reader? Because I've never met a reader who's never been in a reading slump. But anyway, like I just need a break from it sometimes. Sometimes I need to do other things. Sometimes I just want like a little bit of something different. But I always come back to reading. Like I didn't start this channel and make it entirely about books to one day just never talk about books again. You know what I mean? But obviously like I have other interests. Obviously there's like other stuff I wanna talk about, other content I wanna make, other things I wanna do. But reading and booktube like are never gonna leave that. Like this is where I feel like I belong. But no, to answer the assumption, I don't not want to be a part of booktube. I do. I'm just trying to figure out how I can now fit into booktube with who I'm at at this point and what I want to be doing and what I want to be making. So that's why like the booktube content you see that I make is like the stuff I actually want to make. I feel like talking about some books I bought, I'll make a haul. If I feel like doing a reading vlog for a single book that emotionally destroyed me, I will make that reading vlog. I think I'll always make those. Those are just so much fun for me to film and honestly for me to watch back too. Yeah, I feel like people like have this assumption a lot that like I don't want to be a part of booktube because I distance myself from it a little bit, but I think people don't realize that I didn't just distance myself from booktube. I had distanced myself from everything for a while and booktube was just the most visible part of it because that's the part of me that you all see. So yeah, I'm sorry. I cannot talk and do eyeshadow at the same time. But yeah, there are just like a lot of things I want to do and I want to make more booktube content. I want to make the booktube content that I make to be more like, not just creative, but sometimes I get caught up in that whole like creativity thing. I'm like, it needs to be creative, it needs to be creative. And sometimes I feel like I used to get caught up in like, I only wanna make content that I would like want to watch, but then I realized, sorry, this is a tangent. I realized that like a lot of the stuff I like to watch is not actually stuff I like to make. I like watching like analysis videos and stuff on YouTube, like video essays and stuff. Like I love that stuff. Do I have the patience to do like the research to make a video essay? Absolutely not. Like I'm not gonna do that. I know that's not the content I like to make. I like to make simple stuff where I talk about like my experiences and share those experiences with people and hopefully they can help people or like just like talk about like the books I've read and share the things I love. Like that's what I like to make. And I think for a long time I thought that I had to make what I wanted to watch and then when I realized that like I don't have to make what I want to watch, I just have to make what I like to make, I feel like that gave me so much like mental freedom and creative freedom and it got me out of like a creative block that I was in. Anyway, um, that was a super long tangent, but yes, again, I have no intention of leaving booktube. I don't think I've outgrown booktube. I don't want to leave this community. I just want to find a new space within it for myself, which is honestly kind of hard sometimes, but I'm trying to do that and um, I feel like I've taken steps towards that and hopefully that comes across and there are things that are coming in the future as well that I feel like will help me with that as well. So yeah, I'm excited about my future on booktube, in booktube, in this community, and what it's gonna look like. I feel like I'm gonna be really proud of it ultimately. Ugh. The camera is constantly running out of space. You're in a war with yourself to choose between what you wanna do and what you should do. I feel... I need these cars to stop. I feel like that would have been true like a year and a half ago or so, like maybe even a year ago that would have been true, but like two years ago, a year and a half ago for sure, that's like where I was at. That's where I was at for like the past several years actually. I was just constantly stuck between like, what is the right thing to do? Like this is what I want, but this is what I'm told I should do or what I think I should be doing. And now I'm just in this place of like peace where I'm like, I've made my choice and like, I don't even know what's to come at this point, but like I know what I want to do and I'm gonna try to do that as best as I possibly can. Still have a lot of self-doubt constantly. Like anytime I try something new, I'm like, you're not good enough. You're never gonna be able to do this. But I just have a much easier time working through that. I feel like that internal battle has definitely um, 
settled down. I wouldn't say it's over, but it's definitely um, calmed down. Is that even even? <laughs> even even? Maybe? I don't know. I can't see. It's so light anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You have many close friends. Um, I think I've answered a question like this before, but I feel like my answer for this actually has like changed. And I guess I just wanted to talk about like friendships in general for a little bit. I feel like in the past I would have told you, yeah, like I have many, many close friends and friendship is like one of the biggest values in my life. It's one of the things I value more than anything else. Um, but this past year has like changed a lot of that for me. And I lost some people in my life that I didn't think I'd ever lose. I used to have a lot of very close friends. Like I had a core group of friends, like it wasn't like a ton of people, but I had a lot of close friends and I was very close with a decent number of people and they knew like everything about me. But I feel like this past year really changed that. And I mean, it's in part because of the pandemic and like the distance and everything and like everyone's relationships really changed. But this was actually prior to the pandemic even starting. I experienced a lot of like loss within friendships and it really changed my outlook on like who I let into my life and um how I let people into my life and now I would say I only have a few very close friends um which was honestly a little bit earth shattering for me because I went from having like a ton of people in my life and always having been that way like I I always had like a lot of friends and a lot of close friends one of the most difficult things for me throughout this whole year I think and still one of the things I think I'm struggling with the most is I feel so lonely and isolated as I think a lot of people do especially considering we are all so isolated but I mean like within friendships I feel like very lonely and isolated especially online and within this community a little bit to go back a little bit to the like booktube related question this isn't like on the booktube community or like a fault with the booktube community as much as it is like a thing with my own experiences that I've been through in the past year and now how I approach friendships and relationships and stuff but I just feel so alone like I feel so alone online I feel like I have no one to talk to I, I feel like I don't have a place where I belong I feel like I don't have community around me in a lot of ways within like other creators and again this is not on people this is on like my own attitude now towards, I guess, like the fear that I have now around like making friends with people. I know I'm being very vague about this and I don't want people to think that I'm talking about like other YouTubers. I'm not. The losses that I'm talking about with like friendships in my life were people that you all don't know. Just to clarify that because I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Like I know people talk a lot about how much breakups hurt, obviously. Romantic breakups and how they like kind of break trust in you. But I feel like people never talk about how painful it is to lose friends, especially friends you've had your whole life, uh, people who've been there with you through everything. And to like lose them breaks you on like some level that it's it's so hard for me to talk about still. Like it's been a year and it's still so hard for me to talk about. A lot of the pain that I still experience and it like comes back up a lot of the time. I don't, should not be talking about things that make me sad right after I put on my mascara. That's a stupid decision. <laughs> but anyway, my point is that yes, I used to have a lot of really close friends and now I don't because of a lot of the experiences I've been through over the past year and I feel like this is one of the things I struggle with the most right now. This is a lot of the stuff I don't talk about so much online, but it's an experience that has like really shaped me over the past year and it's currently the thing I feel like I'm working through the most, trying to like figure out how do I let people back into my life? How do I let new people into my life? How do I find community for myself when I feel so afraid to reach out to anybody? Not to be like Peyton Sawyer from One Tree Hill, but like people always leave. And so how am I supposed to like overcome that? fear. It's super weird because like I really used to define myself by like how close I was to my friends and having lost those some of those people who were super super close to me now, I feel like a different person. <laughs> and it's very weird. Now I don't know how to define myself. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's my completed makeup look. Oh wait, I'm not wearing lipstick. <laughs> Hold on. I literally exclusively live in this NARS lip balm, tinted lip balm now. I like can't even wear lipstick. I just put this on and sometimes I put on some lip gloss. That's it. I've gotten so lazy with makeup. You give excellent dating advice. That's so funny to me because honestly, yes, I do. Have I ever dated anyone? 
No, <laughs> but I give great dating advice. I saw this one TikTok last week that was like, my friends coming to me for dating advice, even though I've never dated anyone. And then it said something like coaches don't play. And I was like, correct, that's me. That's literally me. <laughs> Honestly, you can ask any of my friends. They will tell you I gave good dating advice. I've never been in a relationship. I'd like to take some of that advice myself one day, Um, but <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> There we go, now I'm done. <laughs> All right, this is my completed makeup look. It's very simple, I really didn't do anything. <laughs> okay, this is such a specific assumption and I literally love it because you're absolutely correct. It says you love your name. I do love my name. I adore my name. I wouldn't choose a different name for myself. I love that my name is symmetrical. It makes me so happy. It's fun to write. It's fun to look at. I think it sounds pretty. So yeah, I literally love my name. I don't know why this makes me so happy, but yes, you're correct. I do love my name. Oh, we can talk about this. For minute. Your eating disorder is getting better and better and you are doing very well. Hope this is true. Your assumption is absolutely correct. I don't ever think I want to use the term like recovered for myself because um, I don't think that'll necessarily be true and I also think it's a little bit damaging to my own like mental state to think of myself as I'm recovered because then I can't like do poorly if that makes sense. But at this point in time, I am so happy to say that I barely think about my eating disorder. <laughs> I obviously still have the thoughts, like I said, they don't fully go away. They come back up pretty intensely every like month or so, every once in a while, if I'm under a lot of stress, if I'm dealing with a lot at the moment, if something bad happens. But day to day, I genuinely like don't think about it. I never thought there would be a time in my life where I didn't have consuming thoughts about food in my body because I've always had them. But at this point, like I really don't. I go about my day thinking about 99% of the time I'm thinking about other things. <laughs> Whenever I'm thinking about food, it's like, what do I feel like eating? Like, ooh, I really want this. That sounds good. And then I make decisions based on what I feel like eating, which is completely new for me as well too. Like I never thought I could get to that place. And yes, like the body dysmorphia is still there. I think it'll always be there. But again, none of it is as bad as it used to be. And I'm doing so much better. And like, I don't know how to explain how I used to be in a place where like minimum, like 80% of my thoughts were entirely about my body or food. And at this point, I genuinely think about it so little. It takes up so little of my time and energy and my thought. And I have so much else to be thinking about and so much else to be doing and stuff that I'm excited for that like, I hardly think about any of that. And it's such a good place to be in. It's such a good feeling. I never thought I would get to this place, but my God, I look back on myself from like two years ago and I can't believe I'm the same person. Cause I'm honestly not the same person. I feel like a completely different person and I'm so much happier than I used to be. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I never thought I could be happy outside of my eating disorder, but I'm so much happier. My quality of life is so much better than it was when I was deep in my eating disorder. So for anyone who's struggling right now, I hope that you also find this peace one day because your eating disorder is not worth it. It's not worth it. I came out on the other side and I can fully tell you with full confidence, it's not worth it. It's not life. It's not living. This is living and this is worth it. Anyway, that's my little recovery soapbox. Ooh, you want to experiment more with your style and fashion sense. Yes, absolutely. This is something I've been focusing on in the last year as well. Expanding my style, figuring out what my style is. Like, what do I actually like to wear? Because for so long, I felt like I was wearing whatever was like there, whatever I felt like could cover up my body. Again, going back to like my body image issues, I felt like so much of what I used to wear was just to cover up things that I didn't want people to see that I felt insecure about. And now I'm like, what do I actually like to wear? I don't know. And so I've been spending the past year trying to figure that out. And I feel like I've come to a place now where I'm definitely stepping more into my own style and finding the things I genuinely love and the things that make me comfortable and happy and the things that I feel like express who I am. And it's been really fun and I'm really having a great time experimenting with that. But that is it. Um, those are all of the assumptions I'm gonna answer for now. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and watching me put on makeup, answer some of these questions. I hope you learned something new about me maybe. Hopefully I didn't repeat too many of the same questions. But if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, if you wanna know any more about me, feel free to DM me or message me anywhere. All my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, bonus question. Somebody said you're a good dancer. So I'm gonna show you my dancing skills. <laughs> Can you even see me? This doesn't even go high enough. Okay. I have no dancing skills. I've never danced in my entire life to answer your assumption, but I know like parts of the choreo to like a few K-pop dances. That's literally it. I know that like one part of Boy With Love, the like, you got me high so fast. Da, 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 da. What is it? 
「おまんまんまいおまんまんまい」って。<笑> That's my dancing skills. Okay, bye.